そろ晩餐の時間ではないかすでにわらわはこの屋敷のホストであるそなたらを素晴らしきディナーで歓待しなくてはならぬというものおあつらい向きに三人ではないかこれはこれは実に実に好都合<笑>ジーはい。The three people ran from their golden pursuers and flew into the mansion. <laughs> They unlocked the door and dashed into the room. A bit of the scent from Natsui's favorite gentle incense remained in them. However, there was no time to let it calm them now. Shannon's womanly sensibilities led her to conclude that. And next to the bed, there was only an incense burner, a half red novel, and glasses. However, the dresser was elegant and had many drawers, and it would be understandable if she'd kept some of her valuables in there. He began to violently open each one of the drawers. He had to hurry. He couldn't actually hear footsteps, but he had the feeling that the witch was approaching. He had the feeling that her laugh was approaching. He emptied the drawers one by one and examined the contents. Every small box for makeup looked like a treasure box, and the amount of effort it would take to inspect all of them made him feel a little dizzy. <laughs> At a glance, it looked slightly larger than a music box. When shaken, it rustled, as though various small objects were inside. But it was locked and didn't open. Gorda looked all over the room trying to see if there was some tool that they could use. And he noticed the door, which had been left open ever since they had entered. He approached the door to close it, and saw the abominable shadows of people approaching from beyond the darkness in the hall. No. 
was in shadows of people. Because they weren't human at all. Goda's voice trailed off. It was the shock of seeing a procession of those not of this world. He was a servant, so he knew all the servants walking for the Ushiromia family. But he didn't know about these. However, they were definitely servants. They're not servants walking for Ushiromia Kins or Ushiromia Kraus. These new servants who worked for the new master of the mansion, the Golden Witch Beatrice, had goat heads and bright red boiled eyes of lava. As the new master laughed loudly and trimly directed six of the new servants, he saw them approach, piercing the darkness as they came. Of course, she was clad in the gold butterflies that were her symbol. Gorda hurriedly closed the door and locked it. However, just as he locked it, it returned to normal, just as though a spring or something had knocked it back. It gave the illusion that some prankster beyond the door was unlocking it every time he locked it. He couldn't have reached the other side of the door yet. So who was doing it and how? It almost felt like playing with a broken toy. Click, boing, click, boing. <coughs> It was like the witch could see Goda's frantic effort through the door. Even now, the footsteps continued to approach. And when not just their footsteps, but even their breath could be heard. Goda gave up on the lock and slammed into the door, locking it using his own large body. George took it and once again dug into the crack under the lid of the treasure box. It looks like it's working. The pressure from across the door grew even stronger. Goda screamed. This wasn't a war cry during a test of strength. He was terrified. He was simply terrified that nothing but a single wooden door was stopping him from touching something not of this world. But he was still lucky. He wasn't touching the things directly, because they were on the other side of the door. So, if you were to touch them directly, Goda's cry would surely turn from something brave into a pathetic piercing scream, and therefore, one that was more real. Goda couldn't believe what was happening right before his eyes. Coming through the door, an arm was... an arm was... slipping straight through the wood like it was water. As though doing this was the most natural thing in the world. And it rubbed the back of Goda's hand as he frantically tried to hold the door shut. It slid up his arm to his chest and then up to his chin. By now, Buddha's scream wasn't even audible anymore. He could hear a sweet whispering voice from across the door. It wasn't coming from the witch, but it sounded like a young woman. However, that didn't change the fact that it came from someone not of this world. <laughs> the 
that lewd arm burst. Then they heard the sound of something jumping around the room at an incredible speed. They didn't know what it was. Incredibly fast, small, like steel or maybe a beetle. When it buried itself right in the center of Goda's chest and stopped, he realized for the first time that its true form was something like a stake with a strange design on it. Goda's large body shook, bent backwards, and fell over. As it did, the door opened softly, even though no one was pushing it, welcoming in the new master of this room. It looked almost as though the door itself had accepted him. The goat attendants came in one after another, six of them. Then that witch came in, and the gold butterflies came in. The room was wrapped in a blizzard of gold leaf, which fell and piled up, turning it more and more into a world of gold. ルーレットはそなたと常時を選んだ。女の幸せを教えてもらいたかったんだろう。ああ、シャーノ、ダメ<笑> It was the sound of the lid to the treasure box breaking open. When George turned it over, accessories, charms, various small objects that Natsui had treasured when she was a girl fell out. Mixed in with that was a pouch that stood out from the rest. He picked it up and was immediately sure. This was it. <laughs> All at once, the gold butterflies attacked George, who was hurriedly trying to remove the contents of the pouch. At that time, a bright red flash seemed to light up the room for an instant. That red flash seemed to cut a hole in the cloud of gold butterflies raging around the room, drawing a circle with Shannon at the center. So the resulting scene looked truly divine. Almost as though a single streak of light had cut through the clouds in this world of gold. George, who was called a curled in a ball, trying to protect himself from the group of butterflies, didn't have a clue what was going on. Then he noticed that Shannon was standing guard in front of him, shielding him. As she glared at the witch and the rest with a serious face she'd never shown him before. わすれていた。そなたもまた金蔵の優れた家具だったな。それもカノンよりだいぶ熟成した。カノン君はよくも殺したことじゃない。よくも亡きがらを消し去り。その名誉まで汚そうとしたな。おや、おや、シャーノ。それ怒ってるのか。カノンに会えなくて寂しいなら、わらわに頼めよ。いつだって合わせてやると言うのに。
the witch snapped her fingers, one of the six goat attendants glittered gold and changed into Kana. It was definitely a sight to make one doubt their eyes. It was definitely Kanan's face. However, in those eyes, the glint of Kanan's integrity was nowhere to be seen. They were the hazy eyes of furniture that only obeyed the orders of the witch. George couldn't understand the scene right before his eyes. And he finally understood why Goda and the rest had been unable to talk about what they'd seen in the servant room. さあ、<laughs> From the imposter Kanan's arm, a strangely shining curve extended. He planned to tear Shannon apart with that. With a single stroke, he would attack Shannon, who still hadn't prepared her heart and. <laughs> The imposter cannon certainly seemed to lunge at Shannon, drawing several purple curves. But when he flew at her, it was as though some kind of invisible wall had been placed in front of her. The wall repelled the imposter, leaving a bright red ripple on its surface. No, it didn't repel him, it smashed him. It knocked him back, turning him into golden dust, into little bits scattering him. That foolish furniture, who had taken Kanan's form and even disgraced his honor after death, broke into countless gold butterflies. And then those butterflies themselves broke into pieces, and those pieces were broken into pieces, until they were no longer butterflies but a golden splash that faded away. これは驚いた。虫一匹殺せない面をして、これだけの力を見せたか。なるほど。<laughs> the spirit mirror George gripped had let out a divine glow, displaying a strength powerful enough not to submit to wicked, wicked forces. But that glow was no match for the witch's sinister nature. <laughs> これだから家具は怖い。家具。家具。家具。私は家具じゃない。そしてあなたを今はとても哀れに思う。何ほう。千年の魔女に<笑> <家具。家具。家具。笑> Hyakunemoitaranu 
でもあなたが期待するような未練はかけらほどもない語るか家具の分際でジョージと結ばれたくてわらわの靴をなめた日々を忘れてわらわにそれを語るか愛に生き泥泥を這うが人間それを嘲笑い見下しているつもりであなたはそれにはるかに劣る私は今こそあなたを哀れに思う愛し合う二人にとって添い遂げることにどれほどの意味が意味はあるきっとあるでもそれはあなたの言うこととは全然違うもっと神聖にしてあなたごとき邪悪が口にする資格もないほどの神聖な意味があるだから私にはすでに何の未練もないジョージさんと愛を誓い合ったその証として指輪を受け取ったそれで永遠の誓いは完了したあなたがどんな邪悪な魔法や悪意で私たちを災難だとしても、霊園は汚さないはは<笑>綺麗事を詩人のように語るな愛は情欲なんだよ。少女漫画見たく綺麗事ばっかりで語れねえんだよ。男どもは、お前の匂いに惹かれて群がるウジバエどもなんだよ。そんなこともその年でまだ理解できねえのかよ。お前は失望するぜ。その後ろのメガネ男のドス黒い欲望、一度でも覗いちまったら、がっかり愕然、あぜん呆然、全然ダメだぜ。そうの<笑>ああ、もういいやか。何様のつもりだよ、語りやがって。愛なんて結局はそいつに気づいて人は大人になるんだろうお前を汚らわしいウジ虫に変えそいつの愛のどぎたね死ねえよガラクタがてめえが愛を語るんじゃねえThe invisible column of light with Shannon at the center started to have bright red ripples drawn all over it at once. The wall did its best to withstand the unseeable malice that tried to corrode in a, from all directions. お前のその薄っぺらな抵抗に比べたら、パルパルパルパルパルパルパルパルパルパルパルパルパルパルパルパルパルパルパルパルパルパルパルパルパルパルパルパルパルパルパルパルパルパルパルパルパルパルパルパルパルパルパルパルパルパルパルパシャナン・グラスジョージ・サンビハンド。そジョージ・ハクト・ショーダス・ジャスティス・フォンディ。なんだい。最後に。愛してるって。聞かせてください。
僕は